Hi everyone, I'm Jen. Just woke up to a family discussion how our Washington Redskins football team is going to change their name. And I have such mixed feelings about it because after we moved to the States, Washington DC areas where we lived and Washington Redskins uh, became a uh, you know, part of our life. And everyone has different viewpoints of the name being changed. And uh, so I will share you mine is for me, Redskin name was originally honoring the definition of a Native American whose nickname was Redskin. And the Native Americans were known for their strength and their powerful teamwork. And so as a way of wanting to embody those uh, positive characteristics and quality uh, qualities, then um, that is one of the reasons why the name was chosen. It was an honor. And over time, the Native Americans have been redefined by non-Native Americans um, as, uh, as being a negative thing. And so because of this restructuring of defining the group as less than, as weak, as insert whatever flippity floppity ignorant thing you want to do. Um, it just, the redefinition of the people have a ripple effect into the redefinition of the nickname Redskins. And, um, I get it. Uh, that nickname was used as a derogatory. So, of course, I do not uh, accept or encourage or uh, support derogatory um, actions or even thoughts or feelings. I don't have control over anybody else, but, um, but I don't support all that. That's not who I am and or who I be and uh so for me the Washington Redskins they were uh, it represented strength and um and powerful teamwork so uh in the family chat uh one person was like oh I hope they're named the Washington Red Wolves um I do not believe the Red Wolves are native to that area I don't know um but ironically the wolf is known for its strength and for the pack's um, powerful teamwork. So it's the same energy that is trying to be uh, captured and honored and want to be like them, which, you know, if you want to be like them uh, or have your team be represented by those characteristics, that's an honor, you know. So... To me, I'm, I'm, it's all about intention. Um, if someone calls me white, um, when we have a conversation, um, is it their intention? Is it laced with mm, mm, you're white? Uh, cause I've lived in, um, mostly, uh, non-white neighborhoods and there's definitely, uh, intention that goes with it. You know, um, do I represent all of the white people? No, <laughs> but, uh, and, um, I'm different than most people. I do not dance around, um, issues. I was just talking with a friend of mine and I shared this with him and, and, um, so, I don't know if you saw the 4th of July video where 
my best friend Denise and I were playing a game called Quirkle. Three women walked by our table wondering what the game was. Before you knew it, um, I invited them. They were sharing their cheesecake and we were sharing our game and we had fun. And at some point we were talking about what's our favorite uh, 4th of July celebrations. And one of mine was the uh, time as an event organizer, I had rented a reserved a reserved and rented a uh, gazebo at a uh, this park and when we arrived uh, there was a Muslim family that was spread out over two tables it was um, taking up our space but if we shared our table um, there would be room for them. Uh, they wouldn't have their full two tables, but they would be able to share one of the tables. Um, anyhow, I didn't kick them out. It's just incorporated. The more love there is, the more love there is. And so it was one of my favorite things because this was in the middle of the whole Middle East issue, which side note, I feel like a lot of these things are distractions to divide us, to distract us, to create divisiveness that originally wasn't even there. Um, Jason Christopher's voice just came in my mind because he was a big thing talking about this very thing a couple years ago. Uh, you know, does it even exist if it weren't spoon fed to us by uh, the media or whoever? So that was one of my favorite times because, um, you know, damn the Middle East controversy. These are people just having fun, uh, enjoying each other's cultural foods and just being with each other and being loving and kind with each other. And as I'm sharing this story with these three women, I was like, oh yeah, like now the current events are about all lives matter, black lives matter, the black, white, blue issue. And these women, they're three black women and Denise and I are two white women. And it didn't even occur to me until I had this talk about the Middle East people. And so here I am, another 4th of July, free to spend my time with whoever without uh, labeling. Because groups, maybe they have a, a certain uh, characteristic um, that is placed upon them, but that's the whole point placed upon them. So even the Redskins, um, the label of them being strong and powerful teammate, uh, you know, that does not apply to every quote Redskin. Uh, these three women are three very different black people. Yes, each black life matters and they're different. They cannot be lumped together. Denise and I are very different white people. We whiteies cannot be, you know, lumped together. We're just all different, beautiful shards of glass, um, making a, uh, different designs, uh, with the kaleidoscope that we are. So I love you red skin or wolf skin or whatever. I love you. I love you.